Good evening, St. Paul. Welcome to the 134th St. Paul Winter Carnival, the coolest celebration on earth. Thanks for joining us tonight for the Vulcan Victory Torchlight Parade. Let's hear it. All right, well, the parade's brought to you tonight by Sunbelt and brought to you through on SPNN TV. You'll be able to see it on uh, the TV or on YouTube, and you're probably going to want to watch that many, many times. <laughs> well, tonight, my name is Tom LaSalle, and with me tonight is the 2019, he just finished his reign a week ago Friday, King Boreas Monty Johnson. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Great, good to have you. Great I'm Brent here. LaSalle, and I'm here with Tom again this year. And on the right of me, we have the 2019 Queen of the Snows, Allison Gunter. Good evening, St. Paul. Well, it's great to be back in Rice Park. You know, last year with the park under construction, we had a move, and it was uh, it, the logistics were a little more complicated. This is fabulous. The park looks tremendous. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at the ice sculptures? Pretty amazing, and they, they stayed ice this year. So Boreas did a little better job this year. You know, you had a good year for ice. We had a couple years where they looked more like modern art by this time. Right, last year it was almost too cold for ice because yeah. we had that minus 40, so it was crazy. I, I remember that, yeah. the, uh, not, a good, not good for a parade. Well, it's, it's hard to believe tonight why the parade started. In, the, uh, in 1885, St. Paul was a hub for the railroads and we actually housed a couple of railroads. It was interesting, I, I looked a little more at this. We had the Minnesota and Pacific Railroad Company started here in 1857. The St. Paul and Pacific uh, Railroad, the sp and &P, which ended up being the Great Northern was here. But in 1885, a writer from New York rode the train all the way to St. Paul. He went back and he wrote an article and he said that St. Paul is another Siberia, unfit for human habitation in winter. Well, the Chamber of Commerce was offended by this, and thus the Winter Carnival was born. So the first Winter Carnival was in 1886. It was a little sporadic after that, but then it got on its feet, and we've had 134. So it's pretty amazing. Yes. So now as king, tell us a little bit, Monty, what did you do? Well, we had a very active year. A lot of people... Uh, are here for the Winter Carnival 10 days, but then the rest of the year, we're very, very active at schools, nursing homes, VA hospitals. We also visit other states. Uh, we were at the 50th celebration of Festival de Voyageur. And well, that's we, a great one, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is a great, yeah, it really yeah. is. And we were in uh, Bradenton, Florida for uh, Hernando de Soto Festival, Macon, Georgia for the Cherry Blossom Festival. And uh, so lacrosse, Oktoberfest, and obviously Minneapolis Aquatennial, South Dakota Snow Queen Festival. And then I think, uh, Allison the Queen, I think 58 parades around the local area. Right, so Boris. yeah, so very active in the uh, communities in Wisconsin and Minnesota as well. well. You only did about 400 appearances, didn't you? Yes, that is true. Yeah, so we are so pretty active. A lot more to the Winter <laughs> Carnival than one week. These folks go around, uh, as Monty was saying, around the country, uh, out of the country, but to community every weekend during the summer. Yes. In fact, every day of every weekend during the summer. <laughs> And, uh, but it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Now, this wasn't your first rodeo with the Winter Carnival, was it? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, 30 years ago, I was the prime minister. And so I had uh, an opportunity to uh, be the organizer and coordinator for the royal family back in 1990. And uh, it was just a great experience. I, I had got, I moved to St. Paul in 1980 and was involved in the St. Paul JCs. And back then, we did the Klondike Cake Casinos and the pageant. And so that was my introduction to what... Uh, it was part, not really a, technically a part of Winter Carnival, but it became that later on. And so then I was asked to do that, and we just had a great experience. And uh, then, uh, you know, 30 years later, they asked, uh, would you be interested in being uh, King Boreas? And uh, we had to think about it a little bit. It's a big commitment, uh, time-wise, uh, money-wise. Sure you forgot about some of that. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. You forget about some things. but uh, And I was blessed with a wonderful, uh, great queen, uh, great princesses, great... Uh, we had a guard group that was awesome. The winds were awesome. We had great royal coordinators. And, of course, the king gets to pick his own prime minister. 
So, and that was someone I knew from uh, when she was Miss Roseville in 1993. Wow, great. So a lot of history, uh, you know, tied into a festival that is all about history. And so it's, uh, it's been a great run. Well, you did a great job too, Brent. So Allison, Allison and folks had to give up her crown a week ago Friday, but this was not the first time you've worn a crown. <laughs> Correct, correct. I uh, reign from the little town of Clare City, Minnesota, which I am the third queen of the snows to come from that tiny town out west. And prior to that, I also served a year with the Minneapolis Aquatennial. And uh, can you tell some of the young ladies, my guess is we probably have some young ladies ranging in age from maybe 2 to 25 that are curious, how does one get into this world? Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody and everybody is welcome to join the St. Paul Winter Carnival. You know, we have things for people of all ages, but specifically, you want to become the queen of snows, easy. All you have to be is 21 years of age and a high school graduate. Um, you go ahead online, the thestpaulwintercarnival.com. There's an application you fill out, and you join in on the incredible journey as a candidate, which lasts for about three months or so, um, and then five royal ladies are selected out of that group. Now, you say there are five royal ladies. Who are the other ladies? Correct, correct. So you met me, Queen of the Snows, from last year. Alongside of her are the Northwind Princess, the Eastwind Princess, Westwind, and Southwind Princess. And what do the princesses do when you guys are on the road? Absolutely, absolutely. We all share the equal commitment in terms of bringing it to the people. You know, we are the St. Paul Winter Carnival. We are out visiting, as King Boreas said, 400 events in a year. So we are right there expressing the legend. So every character of the Winter Carnival, you have the North Wind, who's the blustery cold titan, the East Wind, who's mysterious, the mysterious East, the West Wind, who's the cowboy, and the South Wind, who's a, you know, ooh la la, bringing that characters <laughs> to life everywhere you travel across the entire state and country. All of you will get a chance to see people who've represented those roles in the past in uh, tonight's parade. They'll be coming by on their floats. Well, this is uh, an event that's all about volunteerism. And uh, if you haven't ever volunteered for something, Winter Carnival is a great place to start. Uh, there are tremendous opportunities. You probably see a lot of folks around tonight in blue coats and red coats. They're all volunteers. We're volunteers. The, uh, everybody who coordinates puts on the parades a volunteer. There's a, a role for everyone if you're interested in getting involved. If you haven't volunteered, I got to tell you, you're missing out. You get a lot more out of volunteering than you give. And speaking of that, Monty, you've been a volunteer for a lot more than just Winter Carnival. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, we really viewed this uh, role as King Boreas and Lady Boreas as a capstone to a life of community service, that if you've been given uh, some uh, blessings, you should share those. And what you just pointed out is so true, Tom. When, when you give joy, when you give out, you get, you get so much back. And it's blessed our lives to be able to do that. I've been involved with scouting for over 30 years. Um, I was on the board for Minnesota Special Olympics when we brought the International Special Olympics here back in uh, 1991. Yeah, we were part of that too. Right, yeah. and um, I, I coached youth sports for a couple decades um, and was president of the uh, Roseville Park Foundation for 20 years. So it just, it's a bunch of stuff where we just thought we're giving back. My wife's very involved in our church and, and some of her own uh, uh, her own adventures, and we just think that that's really important, and we try and tell our kids that, hey, it, giving back, and you get back, and right. it's, uh, great. it's a great way, and this festival, you know, is just awesome that way. You, you could be a volunteer bartender at the ice bar yes. right at the park yeah, across the street. I think that's streets. a pretty popular uh, job. All right, now, this is actually a pretty serious night, because what's at stake here is summer. <laughs> the, uh, how many came here to root for, uh, for Boreas tonight? Keeping winter. Hail Boreas! How about Vulcan? <laughs> you know, it always looks a little yeah. uh, one-sided here. A lot of support right. for the red out there. <laughs> yeah. Now, Brent, Brent and I came from Aquatennial. I've been Commodore. Brent's been Captain. So we, we lean a little towards summer. <laughs> uh, now I got to tell you, you know, the guard, the guards celebrating their 103rd year today of, of protecting. Boreas. Correct. And, and they are uh, due. The, and, they are due. and their record of fighting Vulcan is 0 and 102. So maybe they're due this year. I don't know. But you, if you hang around, folks, you're going to see the battle at the end of the parade. It's, uh, it's a, if you have, how many have you seen the overthrow before? All right. Let's hear okay. from you. Yeah. All right. If you haven't seen the overthrow, it's touch and go. The, uh, it's, a, it's very exciting. Uh, coming up to the uh, to the overthrow, it's, a, it's pretty chaotic and amazing. You're gonna see a lot of fire engines, a lot of, uh, a lot of noise, 
a lot of fire. And then two groups of absolutely world-class athletes. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll battle, we'll battle it out. Okay. It's quite intense out there. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun to watch. And, and speaking of volunteers, you know, a lot of Vulcan are fire and police, aren't they? It seems to be kind of a tradition of that. There has been a long tradition of that, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So that's great. So those folks, not only are they great volunteers, but they have very important jobs protecting us, and we appreciate that. So it sounds like the crowd's against you tonight. Boy, like you said, we're, yeah. we're 0 for whatever, but uh, you know, we, we uh, do want that summer coming here in Minnesota. And after last year's polar vortex and a record February snowfall, I know that I was getting texts and emails saying, hey, we know you want to do a good job, but could you lay off just a little bit? It was, uh, that was pretty intense. So. If, if and we Boris, love our summers here. If Boreas could maintain nights like tonight for the next six weeks, I think he'd get a lot more support. <laughs> That's probably right. <laughs> The, uh, so, Allison, I think a lot of people probably don't know. We all know about Winter Carnival, and probably a lot of you have been over to the Minneapolis Aquatennial, but probably a lot of people here don't know this is actually just one stop in what is not just a national tour, but an international group of festivals. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Yeah, Boris mentioned them a little bit. So we have been traveling around the country, like he said. So what's really cool about the St. Paul Winter Carnival is we are, you know, the civic celebration of this wonderful community. And places around the United States are doing the exact same thing at festivals around, around the nation. And we happen to be the oldest festival in North America. We are two years younger than the Rose Bowl. So we travel across as dignitaries, representatives of this wonderful community and festival to, you know, Florida, Georgia, San Antonio, Texas, Canada, uh, South Dakota, Wisconsin, and beyond. These guys mentioned earlier the Winnipeg Festival, the Voyager, which is a ton of fun. And the only place anyone has ever said to me, you're only cold because you're from St. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you get to march in a uh, parade on a frozen river. So Correct. That, right. uh, that tops being cold usually. Now, Vulcan's history goes back just as far as the king. The first Vulcan was in uh, 1886. Uh, the uh, Colonel Monford was his name. And it wasn't until 1940 that we started getting all of the uh, crew, the Viking, or the uh, uh, Vulcan crew. Prior to that, there had just been uh, the king and the uh, and the and Volk, right. so th that started to change. The uh, in 1970 it, they added a seventh crew member, and that's when uh, we got up to the uh, size they are today. There's been over 500 Vulcans in the history of Vulcans, so that's an impressive group. And something you're going to see tonight, folks, is we'll see the uh, various. Uh, paternal groups of the uh, the winds and the Vulcans and the guard and these folks not only do they do a lot of volunteering as we talked about during their uh, year there of their reign but they continue to volunteer and they continue to work as a group throughout the community doing great things so you'll have uh, uh, and we'll talk about them as they come through you'll have each of those coming through uh, the parade now, if you're lucky, you may get to see the Volks sometime when you're just out and about doing night, a uh, knighting ceremony. And Allison, you, you've seen a few of those? Absolutely, absolutely. Knighting ceremonies have been going on by the Vulcans for almost 60 years. Anybody out in the crowd ever been knighted by King Boreas or the Vulcans before? All right, all right, there we go. I like it. So every year, the Fire Kings literally hunt um, a night hundreds of lucky individuals for doing really great things in their community, um, volunteers, family, friends, and you know, giving them special titles that are um, bestowed reflecting the individual's special um, contribution to a community. So if you are lucky, um, one of those lucky individuals to be knighted, it truly is an honor and a tradition that's been going on, as it says here, for over 60 years. Now you're going to see some of the Valk vehicles when you get here today. They're going to be out in force, and they, they come prepared to win. Um, Monty, can you tell us a little bit about any of the uh, stuff we're likely to see tonight? Absolutely. Uh, as you pointed out, the uh, Laverne uh, fire truck is, is really the uh, Vulcan chariot, and as they call it. So that's, uh, that's been around for a long time, and the, uh, they've allowed these fire engines uh, since the late 1950s, and so many of the crews have a fire engine, but the key one that the current crew rides on is the Laverne, and they spend a lot of time, and again, volunteers spend a lot of time keeping old Laverne uh, out there and keep it going. So we'll get to see the Royal Chariot bringing the Vulcans in with all the torches, and, and uh, it's going to be a great spectacle. It's quite a sight. It's exciting. Well, folks, uh, I just got a call. The, unfortunately, we had a fireman hurt at the beginning of the parade. He's going to be okay, but uh, the parade's going to be a little later, so you get...
good news is you get to hear us longer. Yeah, I have a lot to say. So, so. Uh, hang in there. Don't wonder what happened. It's, uh, there, it's started now, so it'll be here soon. And it is worth it. When the Vulks show up, it's exciting. I, and like I said, we're, we're Minneapolis Aquatennial to begin with, and so is Gunter. Yes. And so, uh, Allison here. So, uh, they're, you know, we're, we're rooting for those guys a little bit. Although, warm summer greetings. 38 degree nights in February, I can live with. So, Monty, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, who, who are the Vulcans? Who makes up the Vulcans? Absolutely. So, you have uh, the, the Vulcan king, a Vulcanus Rex, and. Uh, he likes to say he's the true king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, of course, uh, because he's, uh, as you mentioned, he's been victorious for many years. So uh, obviously he's wearing uh, red and black, and all the other members are going to wear, you'll see them in red. You'll see General Flamus, who's called the Flame, the Keeper of the Flame. And the legend says that the flame dies, the fire king dies, and it will be winter forever. So we, we don't we, want that. We yeah. got, no, we don't want the flame. And then you've got the Duke of Clinker. The uh, Fire King's uh, aide-de-camp and a member of the flock, the clinker, is the longest burning ember. So they all have a little story behind them. And you have the Count of Ashes, uh, the raiser of the sleeping spirits, the swinger of the crew. In fact, uh, Ash has a swing, one of his events for the new for the uh, incoming Ash, and it's quite a spectacle. So if you get a chance to take that in sometime, you should do that. And then we have Sooty, the Prince of Soot, the recorder of past memories, and as he always likes to say, the ladies' man. <laughs> yes. And then we have Baron Hot Sparkus, Sparky, commander of the Lancer's Legion, and Stoker of the Motions, the spark plug to get them going. So uh, sometimes uh, during Winter Carnival, you're out 10 days, you're doing literally from dawn till midnight for 10 days, and you need the spark to get the, get everybody going. Count Embryus, Eby, he's the youngest, the Fire King's Chancellor of the S Exchequer, and he's always the youngest, and he, uh, he likes to call himself the Romantic One, yes. And then, of course, we have Grand Duke Fertilius, better known as Ferdy, the Minister of Propaganda and the Propagator of Progeny. Sounds like we've got some Ferdy fans out there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Or at least a Ferdy. Yeah, that's true. Now, the, if you guys, those of you who haven't seen the Vulcans yet, they're subtle people and they're hard to pick out of a crowd. <laughs> but if, if you look carefully, they do have a uniform. Allison? They do, they do. It's very, it's extremely fun when you're visiting communities. Everybody recognizes the Vulcans. They do a great job. So when you see them, they have six primary pieces to their outfit. So currently, um, they have the suit, the hat, the running suit, the cape, the boots, gloves, goggles to protect their identity during the 10 days, and then of course their grease stick where they hand out those wonderful black V's marking the people that pledge allegiance to Volcanus Rex. Now I grew up in St. Paul, so, uh, and growing up in the 50s, uh, you know, we came to the parade on the bus by ourselves, different time, mm -hmm. wow. but uh, you know, in those days Vulcan uh, was a little less uh, controlled, so you, you, he now, they now ask permission for the V. That is very true. But we, we worked hard to get the V, so uh, you know, we, were, we were out there for it. The other thing I've got to say, I've said this for years, for years I looked for the treasure. Now I grew up in Highland Park, so of course every year, regardless of the cruise, clues, I looked in Highland Park because that's where we were. That's where the treasure was this year. That's true. You finally yeah, right? would have won. I could have won. I know exactly where they found the treasure. I, it was my year, and I missed it. You missed just, it, You Tom. just missed it by 60 years. I just, <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. <laughs> but, you know, so there's a lot of fun things that happen. Speaking of fun events, they had some new events this year. How many of you brought a dog and had a drink this year? Anybody bring their dog? Hops and hounds, right? Yeah, and hops Sunday. and hounds. I didn't get here, but that sounded like fun. I don't allow my dogs to drink, so I decided <laughs> not to come. Well, I brought my dog down, and we had 30 Bernese Mountain Dogs. We oh, had the, great. the Twin Cities Bernese Mountain Dog Club here, and the, uh, the park was filled with burners out there, and it was, it was a great crowd and some good music. So that was, and then across the street, as you mentioned, we had the snow block building for the kids, and we had the warming tent. So uh, some of the new stuff we had, and of course, in Landmark Center, we had the, uh, the jigsaw puzzle. And we had 234 teams, oh, over 1,000 wow. people involved. With the, uh, it's growing every year. It's a fabulous event. Did uh, anyone out there get down to the state fairgrounds to check out the sculptures? 
Snow sculptures, yeah. yeah those are awesome. The Vulcans I, uh, do an incredible job out there at the state fairgrounds building you, beautiful You've been snow out sculptures. there for those, right? Absolutely. Well, so what's out there? Yeah, so at the state fairgrounds every year, the wonderful Vulcans, who are celebrating tonight, um, if they win, they build <laughs> big, a big if, big if, if, yeah, if they, they win. win. They, they, have, they host a wonderful, beautiful, giant snow sculptures. There's a little snow maze, an amazing snow slide for you to bring your family out to and enjoy. Speaking of if they win, there's a big party afterwards. You know, they're... They kind of just take things for granted, but they they've it's rented been planned the, for a while. Yes, they've rented the Intercontinental Hotel, and they have a victory dance after this. Now, I suppose if you've won 102 times, you you can right. take that chance and and go for it. How about dr Drag Queen Bingo? How yeah. many went to Drag right, Queen there Bingo? You go. Sold out event, I heard. Yeah, I've, uh, I saw some things online. It looked interesting. Mm -hmm. The uh, did you go? I did not. I was not able to make it this yeah, year, no. Well, the, it, uh, it sounded like fun. So it's great having new events. Of course, we had some old events. Right behind you, folks, are the ice sculptures. There's some pretty great-looking ice sculptures this year. And some scary. That bug looks a little frightening. In fact, in the walk up here, we heard a little girl, Allison, and we asked whether or not the... Uh, royal family lived in the ice castle that's, that's right. down there <laughs> the, the royal family is able to make themselves 12 inches tall yes. and, and they do spend the winter in those ice castles yes. so not only do we have the overthrow and the victory dance but we have fireworks immediately after the overthrow and those will be happening right here so make sure that you stay where you are for the parade for the uh, attempted overthrow of boreas and fireworks afterwards, and then, should the Vulcan be successful, you can still get into the Intercontinental tonight. I think it's 20 25 dollars at, at the, the door. door. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, they have bands. They have uh, adult beverages are served. If you are interested in meeting a queen, it's usually a place you can find a handful of Definitely former Definitely many of, the of us. Absolutely. Queens of the snow. <laughs> so the uh, so. You talked a little bit about the royal family and who they were. You know, the, uh, now when you were prime minister, what did you do as prime? Well, the prime is really responsible for setting up the schedule for all of these visits uh, throughout the year, working with the royal coordinators, uh, also making sure that uh, the, the king and the queen know where they're supposed to be at and when they're supposed to be there. Which and is then, a bigger thing than you <laughs> think, because how many people are in the royal family? Well, there's 21 characters. And all 21 go to 400 events. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge. That, uh, we talk about the, the classic herding cats and, oh, and yes. you know, herding butterflies and things like that. But it's, uh, um, for a while, I had to go to a whistle back in 1990 <laughs> because uh, we, had, uh, we had some folks catching naps and they would sleep so soundly <laughs> between uh, stops that we had to get them back up. But, uh, but again, everybody's dedicated to doing that. The royal family comes down and lives in what we call the King's Palace, which is uh, the Royal Palace, which is the St. Paul Hotel. So we come down for 10 days and do that. And the, But the Prime Minister really gets started about six months before they take over because you're planning all these different events you're going to go to. You're working with the wins who have been announced. You're uh, meeting the candidates uh, that uh, Queen Allison talked about. And you're meeting the guard group. And then you're the spokesperson for King Boreas because, of course, he's kept a secret until coronation night. So that's uh, another part of the job that uh, you're doing as prime minister. So and prime's, yet, uh, prime's a little harder job. The prime is a tough job. They, uh, all the primes like to talk about it's the hardest working job in winter carnival. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. Spend a fair amount of time practicing saying hereditaments and appurtenances too. Absolutely, bring your <laughs> box of hereditaments. Yeah. So exactly. what he's talking about is knighting. And uh, has anybody ever been knighted out there? Do we have any people who have been knighted in our crowd? How about by Vulcan too? So King Boreas, uh, goes out to different communities, and uh, many times, I think the communities select the people, don't they? Uh, yeah, th a lot of times they'll call in, and again, to the prime minister or the royal coordinator, and say, hey, we have some people who've done great community service this year. And our theme last year was celebrate community service, so we really wanted to do that. Anybody who's doing a great job for their community, we wanted to get out there and recognize them with that knighting ceremony. So the knighting ceremony, what that is, is as uh, Monty said, it's recognizing a great volunteer in a community. They're chosen by the community. And we've talked uh, tonight about volunteers at the St. Paul Winter Carnival. 
you're going to see a, a number of communities rented, uh, represented here tonight, and they have a depth of volunteers as well, and they're active all year. Uh, we go to their, uh, to their festivals, to their coronations, and uh, to their parades all year, and uh, I think, what are there, about 40 of those, I think, that we go to? Probably. But, yeah. but in, least, yeah. 40 to 60. But in Minnesota, I think there's over 200 festivals. Minnesota, by the way, is probably the volunteer capital of the United States. And the United States is the volunteer capital of the world. Right. You know, most countries, government does everything like this. And in the United States, it's volunteers. And in Minnesota, we have a lot of volunteers. Otherwise, you'd never have something this spectacular happening on a Saturday night in, uh, all the way into February, yeah. the very first day. The, uh, so it's a, it's a lot of fun, and uh, those communities do a great job as well. It really is a lot of fun, people. If you can find a, a chance to, to come and volunteer for one of these, it really, it's, it's, it's a lifetime gift. You never really lose contact with the people you work with in these, and, and uh, how many marriages come out of them. And yeah, we're, we've friendships. really got to get uh, festival Match.com. <laughs> uh, I think there's money to be made there. But seriously, so. what it is is it's a safe place to be. It is. You know, you talk about how do you meet people. You're trying to meet people online, uh, meet people in a bar, meet people at church, whatever. But what's great is Winter Carnival, you bring together people you would, you would never get the opportunity to be with. You know, I, the kings that I've gotten to know, I've been around Winter Carnival now for maybe about 14, 15 years. I've met... Uh, between Winter Carnival and Aquatennial, I think I've met four morticians. Mm -hmm. What are the odds? Usually you meet one mortician and he does all the talking. <laughs> the, uh, this is a, you know, I've gotten to know those. I've gotten to know people that are in various uh, businesses that, uh, yours for example, which I can't even explain. And, uh, <laughs> it's a little the, technical. The, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it says, to uh, ones we see all the time. We have Dan Stoltz uh, from Spire Credit. We get to see Dan on TV all the time. You guys will uh, get to see him in a few minutes. He's he'll be parade. here, but he's a great sponsor of Winter Carnival. He is, he's a yes. former Boreas, a former uh, Commodore of the Aquatennial, and Spire's uh, a sponsor yet again this year. Uh, this year, too, Sunbelt is a big sponsor this year. We're going to see them twice in the parade. And uh, it, so we talked to our volunteers, but it takes sponsors. It costs money to put on this. Even though you have all volunteers, uh, every, not everything is free. So we have to, we bring in uh, uh, experts. We bring in, SPNN helps us. We bring in other, uh, other kinds of services that we have to pay for. And uh, without the help of these sponsors, that wouldn't take place. Absolutely. We've got Bailey's, one of our sponsors, with the Bailey's Warming House. So if anybody's getting a little chilled, right across the street, you can go over to the Warming House, and there's Bailey's uh, and uh, non-alcoholic things in there as well. So. You know, I went, uh, I got the Weight Watchers app, and uh, you put in, you know, your thing. I could either have two Bailey's or eat. <laughs> oh, so you had two Bailey's. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. There was no <laughs> question. You know, okay. that, that was easy. That question, Tom. <laughs> that was easy, but... <laughs> Tom, you mentioned about sponsors, and, and that's one of the things that uh, I want to, with the Royal family and with the Vulcans, is that they all, we all go out and get sponsors because each character pays for their own wardrobe for the most part, travel, and uh, a lot of other expenses as well. And so the idea is that we get these sponsors to help us keep doing this so that uh, anybody of any means can be one of the characters. You don't have to be, I was on the radio here a couple weeks ago and he says, so this is a rich guy's game. Yeah. And I'm not a rich guy, but I was very fortunate that uh, you know, we were in a place where we were able to do this. And it really allows anybody to do that because you can go get those sponsors and the ambassadors group does a great job. They help. Uh, Allison, maybe you can just talk a little yeah. bit of what all the stuff the ambassadors Absolutely, do yeah. as well. Absolutely, yeah. So um, I'd like to touch as well, and Tom brought this up too. When you come to Winter Carnival, volunteering for it is incredible, and the network of people you receive is amazing. What's really special about this organization is that we have these amazing groups that carry on afterwards that you don't get to see in the limelight because the royal family does that, but you'll see them go through the parade today. So, Monty mentioned um, the ambassador organization is the organization you do not need to be a former character of the Winter Carnival for. Anybody is welcome to join and be a part of that group. Um, they provide the wardrobe for the royal ladies. They provide scholarships um, for young, young people going off to school and other various charitable um, events and organizations over the, over the year. 
Well, and volunteer is the, there's a, as I said earlier, the range is unbelievable. One of the things you can volunteer for is to go stomp snow at the <laughs> uh, fairgrounds to get it uh, compressed enough so that they can uh, make sculptures out of it. So even I have that skill. Right. The, uh, so, you know, there's those kinds of things. We have, you know, uh, oh, par- it can be carrying the parade banner. Carrying parade banner. Carrying yeah. a snowflake. Those will both be, uh, well, I don't know if the snowflake's in the parade tonight, but that would have been, that was in the day parade on Saturday. The, uh, we have helpers to take care of kids. We've got uh, setting up tents, you know, all the tents you see around here. There are coordinators of everything. For example, ice sculptures, someone has to go out and find the folks to come and do the ice sculptures, to come in. So there's just a wide range. One of the great things I think about Winter Carnival too is because you get sponsors and you go out in the community, it really involves the whole community, it involves the business community, which is what really these festivals started out as. As, as I told the story of, uh, you know, in response to being called Siberia, the, the Chamber of Commerce, the businesses, they're the ones who got together and started Winter Carnival and kept Winter Carnival going. And, uh, and sometimes that's been a struggle. And uh, the only time since Winter Carnival's been running uh, full cycle, it was only stopped during World War II. Other right. than that, we've had uh, Winter Carnivals consecutively for, I forget when that started. A long 134 time. 134 years. <laughs> yeah, I think it is 134. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it would yeah. be 138 years then ago because it was off for the war. Uh, yes. So the... Uh, Well, again tonight, folks, don't forget, after this, to stay for the fireworks, stay for the overthrow, uh, to uh, go into the, uh, the celebration. And, you know, this year, if they lose, I still go. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see what happened if they I, lost. I doubt they would be morose. You, think, they, you don't they think are, they'd cry in their beer? No, I think, they, I think they're intent on celebrating. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. You know, it's hard, 103, to, or zero to 103. I mean... I, I'm just glad I'm not associated with that group. Well, it is I'm a Minnesota sports team, am I right, Tom? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was that was. All right, we have to go now. The, uh... Well, I think one of the key things is that legend, though, and and that's why the Winter Carnival, I think, has has lasted this long, is because you've got this wonderful legend. You've got the let's celebrate winter, and then at the end of it, let's welcome in spring and summer. So you've had this legend, and you got all these characters. And as Allison alluded to, all of these characters have alumni groups. So as the former kings, we have the Star That's Boreas. Right. The prime ministers have the Churchill Club. The queens have the former queens organization. The princesses have past princess. And then north, east, south, and west, they each have their own organization. Fire and Brimstone for the Vulcans. So they have the former fire kings that have now combined into one big, uh, what they call FNB, Fire and Brimstone organization. So everybody's got these alumni groups, and that helps keep this legend alive and it helps keep uh, getting volunteers and recruiting the next generation of volunteers and you know we joke all the time about the marriages that come out but the other thing that really comes out of this world are jobs uh, how many if you know if you're a young person in your early 20s looking for to start a career there's very few ways that will give you uh, more options than to get involved with winter carnival you'll be working with people and I, I don't know Dan Stolt, just go talk to Dan. Dan employs two thirds right, of this world. That's right. A lot of jobs come out of this. Well, now you know you've got four wind brothers. You've got the uh, the north, the east, the west, and then the south. Now the south wind has a little dubious past. That is what, what's the south wind uh, guilty of? You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, legend has is is the uh, the south wind is the unreliable brother, right? So everybody's got their family dynamics, and uh, as does the royal family. So we've got the uh, we've got the south wind, and then as legend has it, he's the one who defects, and that gives Volcanus enough uh, enough power, enough uh, manpower, or whatever girl power to to take over and uh, to bring spring. So he's uh, that is the one that uh, defects. That's how the story goes, and we'll see that. Uh, well, we'll, we'll see that. Mean, right do we know that for well, sure? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. But uh, so what's going to happen, folks, is you'll see the royal family come up on the steps with us. And uh, then Vulcan, Vulcan will attack from below. And what's happened in the past once or 103 times is uh, the south uh, wind has uh, eventually joined Vulcan and, as you say, pushed, pushed it over. 
And then Although the queen really, the king's never been defeated. What did the king? What's the well, queen? Well, the king do? actually never officially got defeated. It was by decree and good counsel of the queen that Boreas decided to retreat back, so the people of Saint Paul and Minnesota could have summer again. So it's our fault. Uh, well, fault. thank you. We're, fault. we're okay with that. <laughs> yeah. thank you you know, can thank the queen next time you see him. Yeah. So then the legend has, because on good counsel of the queen, Boreas says, let us retreat. And of course, then Boreas comes back in the fall to bring back winter so we can enjoy more, more times like tonight. Beautiful ice sculptures, snow sculptures, snow slides, uh, the beautiful, uh, this is just such a great uh, thing they've done here with Rice Park, regenerating Rice Park. You see all the beautiful lights out here and uh, the ice castles are lit up so beautifully and, and it's just, a, it's great. Great scene out here. Great we scene. Got a, we got a great picture on our website that uh, our this year's king, mm -hmm. Darren, yeah, took a Darren picture Kingston. of with a uh, drone a couple years ago that shows all of this. It's just gorgeous at night. It's unbelievable. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get a hotel room looking at the uh, park, too, it's beautiful. Well, if you heard a fire engine there in the background, that's a pretty good sign, folks, because... That means that we're going to have a parade. Are you ready for a parade? <laughs> How are we doing out there? Are we staying warm? It's a great night, isn't it? This is, can you imagine thinking it, you couldn't live here, or that calling it Siberia? This is, a, it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, we've never been cold, have we, Brent, during a parade? During, no, never during a no, parade. No, never, never. Minnesota, never. January, nighttime, never cold. The, uh, there's nothing like to, you know, if you get a nice breeze, that's always nice, too. The, uh... Oh, I think it's going to storm. <laughs> the, uh... The Vulcans are near. I think that's what that it, meant. Yeah, it could be. It could be. So, now, Vulcan all wears a uniform. You know, it's, uh... Surprisingly, what color is that? Uh, red. Red. How red. about that? Yeah. A lot so of you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of red tonight. The uh, so some of you are already seeing uh, the start of the parade. So let's get going here. They've got the Saint. I believe the Saint Paul Police Band is going to be coming up uh, pretty quickly here with the start of it. Great way to start off the parade. So the St. Paul Police Band is an organization that's built on tradition, public relation, and musicianship. So founded in 1923 by a trio of St. Paul police officers, the band performs several concerts in the St. Paul metropolitan area and marches in many regional festivals and parades during the year. We alluded to that, how many take place across the state. And membership of the St. Paul Police Band consists of both police and volunteers who enjoy making music and representing both the St. Paul Police Department and the city of St. Paul. Let's hear it for the St. Paul Police Band. All right, and here we, we, we talked a lot about volunteers. We, here's an example. We have two young volunteers carrying the, the uh, St. Paul Police Band. Sign. They look like future Wind Brothers to me, or yeah. Vulcans. Give a big wave, boys. Give a big wave. Welcome, guys. It's always fun to have the band. They join us uh, every year, and I bet they're glad it's warm tonight, too. Now, we promised you a lot of fire tonight, and here comes the, uh, the first part. We've got the Vulcan torches. And who do you suppose is carrying those? Those are groups of men um, who are made up of people who have been in the um, fire and brimstone who have served in the role as a Vulcan or Volcanus Rex in the past. Now remember, these are what we were talking about. All these folks are volunteers. Uh, they've been uh, past Vulcans, so they put in uh, at least a year of, uh, and they go to, they do it pretty much the same and as much as uh, all the other folks in Winter Carnival. And they've got a great uh, organization and do a lot of good public work throughout the year. So, welcome, guys. Hail the vault. Can't have a torchlight parade without torches. That's right. Do you think they look confident? I think so. I think I they do. I think so. Behind them is a, are the Vulcan Vs. What do you suppose that V stands for? Hail the Vulc. <laughs> Yeah. Now look, look at here's via volunteer opportunities. Everyone, these are probably a lot of Vulcan family members carrying the V's. 
Welcome, folks. Glad to have you. Good to see you out tonight. Now, this will surprise you, folks, but you're probably going to get to see them again tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it could have something to do with the name of the parade. For months to come, was what he said. <laughs> I think he said as mo they're as modest as they come. <laughs> the, uh, well, you know, they, they, there's a lot of confidence in having all those torches. I noticed their sign also talked about the uh, Vulcan Victory, and they had the little thing on the bottom for the Vulcan Victory Dance. Vulcan so, Victory Dance, again, $25 they're pretty, at pretty the confidence. Theater confidence. There's, there's <laughs> no way around it. What happened? We lost. All right. Oh, we're back? We're back. We're back. All right, we've got the mayor coming up now. Mayor Melvin Carter. Looks like in a huge entourage today. Oh, it's the Minnesota mayors. They join us uh, uh, every year for this. So you've got mayors from all over the state in this group. So welcome. Great to have you in beautiful downtown St. Paul. Did we ever mention that's the capital? And we warmed it up for you tonight. That's right. Thank, for, thank you for coming. And I'm sure that the Vulcans and Royal family will see many of you in your communities uh, later this year. So is, is Mayor Carter there? I can't see. There, there he is. is. There he is. All right, there Mayor he is. Carter, welcome, welcome. Carnival. So he's a fourth generation St. Paul resident, so it's great. He's done a lot. He graduated from uh, uh, in school here and everything. And he was Junior King Frost when he was a young man. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, that he was great. Junior Royalty. Yes, absolutely. Oh, junior Royalty. <laughs> Next up here we have the St. Paul Fire Department, which operates out of 15 fire stations located throughout the city in three district districts under the command of three district chiefs and a deputy chief in each shift. So the department currently operates as a fire apparatus fleet of 15 engine companies, seven ladder companies, three rescue squad companies, 15 paramedic, paramedic ambulances, one arson unit, and numerous special support and reserve units. So here we have our parade sponsor, Sunbelt. Whether you're a contractor or a homeowner, the team at Sunbelt Rentals can provide you with the expert advice and the equipment you need to complete any job. To find the, uh, their Twin City locations, visit them at sunbeltrentals.com let, and let Sunbelt Rentals make it happen for you. And any of, you know, I'm, I'm big on uh, uh, DIY, do it yourself. And I'm big on renting tools, because yeah, otherwise I end uh, up with a garage full of things I can't use. <laughs> And they're a newer sponsor, so it's great to see them become part oh, of the yeah, uh, St. Paul Winter Carnival family here. So. That is great. That's great. Well, we want to thank them because they're, they're a big sponsor in this. Now we've got a perennial sponsor of uh, Winter Carnival. We have five Eyewitness News. This is uh, KSTP, Channel 5, the Upper Midwest's first commercial television station. It's owned by the pioneering broadcasting uh, company Hubbard Broadcasting. They signed on the air April 27th, 1948. Channel 5 has been an awesome supporter of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, airing various um, Here come our Grand us. Marshals. Yes. You, you can watch uh, Leah McLean, and you can have uh, at Matt Ballinger. You'll see them in the hearing all that noise here <laughs> on their balloon. They got two full hours over lunch and on five Eyewitness News mon midday at 11 a.m. and Eyewitness News at noon on 45 TV. And Download the KSTP app for news and weather on the go. So Leah and Matt will be joining us uh, a little later to uh, help uh, finish announcing the parade and the attempted overthrow of Boreas. So we'll be seeing some more of them. Try to get close to that uh, balloon. It, it feels nice on, feels on, nice. on winter nights. Oh, yes, it does. Well, KSTP has been a great sponsor. They, uh, they've, a number of people from KSTP have been in various positions. 
the uh, they've been our grand marshal, media grand marshal for all the years we've been. Yeah, I was going to say I yeah, don't think we've ever I, had anyone I, else. Yeah, so long-standing partnership. It Absolutely. is. It is, and it's those partnerships that make this possible. Well, now look at the colors are changing on the uh, all of the uh, ice carvings. That's great to see. Yeah, and we've mentioned this before, but there are fireworks after the show, and they are absolutely spectacular. They are literally this. right on top of us. Yeah, and it's it's really a spectacular thing. So I think after the parade, some of the the uh, other things are going to be open in the park as well. So absolutely. you can still do that. Yeah. Uh, I heard there's a bar at the St. Paul Hotel. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Good luck getting a seat in there. <laughs> We've got Herbie's the ice bar here. right out here in we the middle the of the ice park. ice bar out here. We've got the, uh, the victory dance at the Intercontinental Hotel. You can still uh, go to the victory d dance for $25 at the door. So that's something that you may want to consider doing. The, uh, the other thing you can do is if you, if you don't hesitate to walk up and talk to anybody in blue or red, they can tell you about uh, the various uh, things that they've done, and chances are you're going to meet a former wind or a former uh, king or queen or princess. Uh, we've got a lot of former Vulcans here tonight. Get, go get the story firsthand and find out uh, what their experience is like, and you're going to you know, think about joining. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet people. Uh, or maybe a spouse. And you get, an, you get another family. We talk about our royal family. We talk about our real family. And it's just the energy in downtown St. Paul with this uh, having the parade here and having all these events. I just love that this is how the community comes together and, uh, and builds better community when we're all getting together and celebrating. It's just awesome. All right, and coming up here next, we have the Pioneer Press, which traces its history back to the Minnesota Pioneer, founded by James M. Goodhue, and the St. Paul Dispatch launched in 1886. What else started in 1886? Hmm. Winter Carnival. The St. Paul Winter Carnival. Yes. The two papers I think up. that's why they started. Uh, that's pro <laughs> probably. They wanted to put their story from New York to tell Finally us Finally, something to talk about. <laughs> The two papers operated as separate morning and evening papers for many years, and then they merged together into the Pioneer Press and Dispatch. Now they've, they've put on the uh, treasure hunt for many years. As I said when I was a, a child, that was a huge, huge deal, and uh, uh, searching for it relentlessly in Highland Park only to be thwarted this year. Yeah, I know. It's really unfair. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I quit. I, apparently, I quit looking for it. 50 years too Just soon. Just too soon. Each year, the Pioneer Press has a really great article on the new king and the new Aurora, Queen of the Snows. So if you have not checked out that edition yet, please do. It's, it's one to take a look through and find out who are some of these people that are making up this festival. In yesterday's paper, they had, uh, or today's paper, they had a picture of the, the queen, this year's queen, who got engaged right in the park, right here yes, on Thursday great? night. So they had job. a nice story in the paper about her and Dan. Yeah, that is fun. So she had a big week. <laughs> <laughs> she had a very big week. <laughs> you know, you're talking about the, uh, the medallion and the treasure hunt. And uh, uh, my wife and I, we live up in Roseville, and behind our house is a big park. And this was about 10 years ago, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm seeing all these lights coming through our windows, and the medallion was found literally almost behind our house. And <laughs> there was hundreds of people out there with torches at 2 a.m., and they all got their rakes and everything out. It, what a fun, just a fun thing, and, and they had just hundreds of people in the park there and uh, searching for that medallion. And, well, when uh, I, when I was fun. at the University of Minnesota, I, I went out and interviewed uh, people looking for uh, the medallion for a psych class I was taking. Now, this is in the uh, 1960s, so I had to take a recorder that was, you know, huge, take it out, do all this, and it froze. <laughs> so I had nothing. Looks like we have Archie coming up next here from yeah. Spire Credit Union. Spire Credit Union's an amazing sponsor of the St. Paul Winter Carnival and ran and operated by a former King Boreas, Dan Stoltz. Now, I have it on good authority that if you watch a football game tomorrow night, you might catch a glimpse of Dan Stoltz on TV. <laughs> really? They're going that far? The huh? authority I have that on is Dan himself. I see. So. Well, that should, <laughs> that's not reliable then. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> Spire so, Credit Union is a not-for-profit financial cooperative that was founded in the Twin City Co-op's Credit Union in 1934. 
So Dan is uh, one of two King Boreas Hail and Boreas. Commodore Hail of the Aquatennial. So he's been a, and he's a great volunteer in the community, he does a lot for St. Paul and for Minneapolis, and uh, has been a great sponsor for Winter Carnival. Next we have uh, KDWB, the uh, Twin Cities number one hits. Well, it's always fun to see the uh, hot air balloons. So this hot air balloon, I believe, let's see here, we'll let you get a little closer and see who's in there. Well, Hal Langevin, Hal's uh, with U.S. Foods. Uh, they're one of the uh, America's leading food distributors servicing restaurants to the health healthcare industry and much more. Hal's also a graduate of Creighton High School and sat in front of me in homeroom. <laughs> He's a lot older than I am though. Right behind them, we have the Order of the Royal Guards. Let's Hail the Guard. The Royal Guards. Hail the Guard. Hail the Guard. It's their 103rd year of protecting King Boreas and the Queen of the Snows from the Balkans. And I can attest, as a former queen, they do an incredible job of keeping us safe. And we've, we have told the crowd that you're going to win tonight. No question asked. <laughs> My money's on the guards, guys. Let's see it. Hail the Guard. Hail the Guard. I believe this is uh, the, the king's own truck, too, this year, isn't it? Yes, I believe it is. That that's is Darren's, right. That's Darren's truck. Darren's got his own truck. Darren, Darren's a former guard. So Darren Johnson, who's the, uh, guard. He's the king up on the top there. Darren is a former guard, and Darren has his own fire engine. That's the or, uh, truck, rather. That's the small one in front. So here comes the uh, 2020 royal family. We have King Boreas, Darren Johnson. And we have Aurora, Queen of the Snows, Kurtz and Knudsen. Prime Kurt. Minister Joe Johnson. Now Joe's another volunteer supreme. Yeah. He's been uh, a, he's been a guard. He's, he's been, been a captain everything. in the uh, yeah. Aquatennial. He's been Hell president the of the Aqu Aquatennial Association. He's very shy and does not like to be on stage, so this is a big deal for him, as you can see. Hail Boreas! Hail Boreas! Along the them to his captain of the guard, Tom Cruiser, Sergeant of the guard, Christopher Schmidt, the sassy mistress of song, Shelly Paps, Titan of the Northwind, Michael Sawyer, Northwind Princess, Tiara Gowan, Euros, Prince of the Eastwind, Don Weinberger, Eastwind Princess Ali Vogel, Zephyrus, Prince of the West, Dan Moran, yeah! And his Westwind Princess, Kara Watnan, and then Notos, Prince of the Southwind, which we will see if he defects tonight, Ben Johnson, yeah. and Southwind Princess Lene Bow. Let's hear it for the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family, everybody. I think right behind them, we have the, the 2017. 2020. 2020. <laughs> Winter Carnival Senior Royalty. We have King Winter, Clayton Miller, Queen of the Northlands, Kathy Abergast, Prime Minister Sherry Howe, and Princess of the Four Winds, Shirley Peterson. So, folks, we've got uh, Matt Ballinger has joined us up here on uh, uh, with us to help announce the parade, and Leah McLean. We told you earlier they were the uh, the uh, Grand Marshals, Media Grand Marshals with KSTP which has been our uh, our sponsor for as long as we can remember. So, Leah, good to see you. We are so happy to be here. This is fantastic. We're trying to make sure this mic doesn't buzz here. Uh, yeah, we're all getting is, too close together. I, I, this is the best parade we've seen in years. I can't get over how many people are out here. So excited to hang out. How many cute babies did we see on your back? You, you, you suppose the warm weather has anything to do with that? Uh, yeah, no. It, it, Following behind right. those senior royalty, we have another part of the legend is the St. Paul Winter Carnival Junior Royalty. We have Queen of the Snowflakes, Lauren Foss, Princess of Ice, Cadence Cooper, Princess of Snow, Grace Westfall, Prince of Ice and Snow, Noah Quiggle, and King Frost, Jonathan Rowan. Hail the juniors. Following in the footsteps of Mayor Melvin Carter. And following in the footsteps of Melvin Carter, exactly. Now we have the, the Northwind, the Titan organization. 
better known as the Best Wind, the Titan organization, and our all former princes of the North Wind. On the truck, our former North Wind princes and their families and princesses. They proudly represent St. Paul's North End. Hail Titan! Hail the, Hail the North! Following the North Winds, we have our East Winds, with former East Winds and their families. They support the city and the St. Paul Winter Carnival and recruit mentors for the new East Winds, another one of those groups that we've talked about. Hail the East! Hail the East! So Leah, as we wait for some of these people to come on up, you grew up in the Twin Cities, right? That's right, and grew up coming to the Winter Carnival. So uh, what's your favorite part of the Winter Carnival? I love the ice They are all in every single year, there's something new and different. And I love when we actually have an ice castle. Those are so fun. So who do we have now? We got the West Wind organization. They, that's the Cowboys. And uh, hail the West, hail the West. So that's the dependable West Wind, another of Boris's brothers. The only brother that has never defected to the Vulcans. This is their former West Wind princesses and their families. And they're great supporters of the city of St. Paul and the Winter Carnival. So what's this red? This is a little confusing. I thought Vulcan was red. Well, you've got the South Wind, and that's... Uh, well, we've heard about them, haven't we've we? We've heard about the legend, yes. So we've got the Ooh La La Princess. We've got the former South Winds. Great organization. Uh, Up on top there, you're going to find your most recent South Wind Princess, Becca Moon! All right. Boy, that bus is and bumping. Oh, here comes the royal order of the Klondike Kate. This is the 2020 Klondike Kate, Shelly Paps, a self-proclaimed sassy but sweet siren from South St. Paul. She certainly is. She has beauty, charm, and a man who done her wrong. She was Kathleen Rockwell. She made her way across the mountains to Dawson City and the gold fields across the Yukon and the Klondike River, just as many did during the gold rush of 1998. Members of the Royal Order of the Klondike Cakes make over 100 appearances a year, and they are so fun every time we see them. We love you, Klondike Kate! <laughs> now, they do a lot of other volunteer work as well. They have uh, the same fraternal kind of order as the, uh, all the winds, the rest of the uh, royal family and Vulcan. So these are our folks. These are great volunteers as well. The, if you haven't heard them sing or gone to one of their concerts, you've missed out. They're a, a lot of fun. They're hard to pick out though because they're 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 not. They're, they just blend in, don't just, they? They just blend. There's no there's no right. flash. Right. Right. You know? None. It's just a little little more. <laughs> but you know when they've been there because you can see feather droppings <laughs> all through the lobby of the hotel. Little, uh, yep. Memoirs of uh, fun that's been had. Rounding the corner right now, the St. Patrick Association of St. Paul. Let them hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that wave of green coming our way. Wow, the St. Patrick a... Association's a nonprofit volunteer-based organization that put on the parade in St. Paul, of course, in St. Patrick's Day each and every year. We want you to join Miss Shamrock, Mr. Pat Shamrock, Princesses, Blarney Brother, and Association members, of course, coming up Friday, March 17th. Ladies and gentlemen, the St. Patrick Association of St. Paul. So Trying this is, uh, right is going to be interesting here to see <laughs> how did you enjoy the parade? <laughs> We're talking about Klondike Kate singing, and yet for and part of their organization, they have the worst tenor competition during. Uh, the, oh, is that right? Leading up to St. Patrick's Day, so if you uh, if you really really can't sing, don't worry about me the Kates. You can go to the St. Uh, Mr. Pat organization and try out for worst tenor. There is something for everybody, and almost everybody can fit on that gigantic <laughs> green truck. Well, folks, we told you you'd see a lot of fire tonight. Yeah, the crowd and really loves when the fire warms it's just them up started. a little bit. It's just that started. That is definitely yes. a crowd pleaser. It is, especially when it's cold. Tonight, yeah, tonight you don't bad. need it. There are days that uh, we've been out what here and you do. Here. The crowd is great. 
Well, here's our, uh, our parade sponsor again, Sunbelt Rentals. So when you need trouble-free rental experience, Sunbelt Rentals is your one-stop source for the broadest range of tools and equipment. Whether you're a contractor or a DIYer, they can uh, quickly and easily provide you with equipment, service, expertise for your project. From cutoff saws and trash pumps to pressure washers and generators. Bring more yes to your large job or weekend project and turn to Sunbelt Rentals. I want to rent the truck. <laughs> <laughs> this, looks, this looks like some great toys. <laughs> well, they've got some big rigs on the parade. I mean, they're, they're, they're yeah, handling I'll the say. turns pretty well. <laughs> Well, listen, to find one of their locations, you can visit them on SunbeltRentals.com. So here comes one of these uh, communities we talked about that one of the things we do... Our ambassadors from Woodbury. Absolutely. So we go to their parade, they come to our parade. It's awesome. We get a relationship all year long with these guys. So we have the... Uh, their ambassadors are with us today. Miss Woodbury getting Jolly Raman. Next is up a group following Woodbury that I'm a little partial to, as we all are up here, I think. It's the Minneapolis Aquatennial Ambassador Organization. All right, Look welcome, welcome. The Minneapolis Aquatennial Ambassador Organization is a community-based leadership and scholarship program. All of the ambassadors make appearances all over the state, country, and Canada, creating and maintaining festival civic relationships along the way. It is our fest sister festival from across the river, right here for the Minneapolis Aquatennial. And right behind them are the uh, Aquatennial Senior Ambassadors joining us tonight, too. So welcome. Good to see you. Where's your carriage? <laughs> well, here's a fun group coming up now, the, uh, the Twin Cities Unicycle Club. Yeah, the Twin Cities Unicycle Club is the largest and oldest unicycle club in Minnesota with over 200 unicyclists. Wow, Leah, they are amazing to watch. And some of them are really young, too. Yes, they uh, the, are. And, uh, young and talented. <laughs> <laughs> Membership is actually open to anyone who shares an interest in unicycling. Well, that would be you, right? Ab I want to try it. <laughs> I would love to try I'm this. I'm a little scared, but if you do it, I'll do it. Well, I'll watch. <laughs> yeah, right. No, well not done, ladies and gentlemen. Winter. Put your hands together for them. They are unicycling year round. They're at lots of locations. They practice any time around the Twin Cities. They have a variety of activities. They've got uh, individual learning, group riding, unicycle hockey, and basketball juggling, uh, racing, and plenty more too. Up next, rounding the corner here in the parade, the Robbinsdale Whizbang Days Ambassadors. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for them. Look at that on the on the float here. 71 years this of a tradition. A, and it's a community-sponsored city celebration that honors the small town. Second weekend in July, if you're uh, planning out your summer here a little bit early. Celebrating, and we are. It's, well, of course, we're all dreaming about the warmer months. Of, celebrating the uh, annual festival, Whizbang Days. It's the second weekend in July. Again, take out the family. They've got some music going on the float. Looks fantastic this year. Look at those glowing crowns. Beautiful. If you're going to have a crown, it might as well glow. You might as well have an electric crown. Why not? Following the Robbinsdale Ambassadors, we have the Minnesota Boat Club. So the Minnesota Boat Club has been promoting health and exercise through the sport of rowing since 1870. And that is hard work. So way to go, guys. Our pro their program caters to a wide variety of competitive and recreational rowers. So if you're in the mood, you know, get into shape, head on out. And I'm sure they're always looking for more members. The club maintains a beautiful landscape and a lovingly restored banquet hall as well that is available for your next special event. That boat is looking mighty fancy, all lit up. Monty, who's coming around the corner? Ah, uh, this, I think this is Lakeville, another community that we get to go celebrate with during their festival. They come to our festival, so that's, uh, that's just, Oh, it's always great to see them, and you, you see them at all these other parades. You'll see them at Aquatennial, so you get to build a relationship over the year. And uh, this year's uh, Lakeville Royalty, we have Miss Lakeville, Anna Tipka, and Lakeville Princess, Anna Joswey. It looks like we have a couple more on, too. Yes, I think there's more on that parade. I, I'd, have to, I'd have to get my glasses on to read all of the princesses on there. 
and look who's coming here. Oh. We have the Minnesota oh. State oh. Fair. Speaking of the warmer months, we're already dreaming about Pronto <laughs> Pups up here. You know, I think you can get a Pronto Pup over here in the food court. Fairborn and Fairchild pleasing the crowd, saying hello. Out of season, but nonetheless, where are their winter coats? I'm so confused. They have fur. They're OK. Yeah, yes. They have fur. <laughs> We're, we're good. Well, of course, the Minnesota State Fair is something that we can all be proud of. It's the biggest 12-day fair in the whole North American continent. One and a half million people or more visit the state for every single year. Of course, there's so much to do. A world-class event showcasing agriculture, industry, technology, entertainment, and, of course, fantastic food we all know and love and look forward to. And the Princess K butter sculptures well, as of well. Of course. And yes. uh, I like I live believe on Princess cookies. K is here. I no, wonder if she's already used all that butter. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what we should think about this uh, van here because this is the Tux team following them. The Tux team job is to uh, clean up right. what uh, ends up on the uh, ground from the horses. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of horsepower in that uh, van, apparently. Speaking of horses, we have New Brighton Stockyard Days. I see what you did there. Yes. Have you done this before? I have. <laughs> <laughs> so New Brighton has a great, uh, great community celebration. It's uh, established in 1889. It's another one of these really, really old festivals uh, that we have a great long-standing tradition with. Uh, Award-winning New Brighton float carries a Stockyard Days theme with fence rails. You got saddles, you got cowboy hats. It's decorated with silver and purple metallic petals and trim. In 1991, the New Brighton celebration was combined with the famous antique car run from New London to New Brighton, Minnesota. And now look at these guys with the St. Paul Athletic Club. That is some serious strength out yeah, there. That's that some heavy lifting. lifting, ladies and gentlemen. Look at them go. St. Paul Athletic Club, of course, that historic 13-story building right in the heart of downtown St. Paul here. The gorgeous buildings, home to banquet facilities, the athletic club, of course. Hotel 340, Global Language Institute, and the College of St. Scholastica. We have Stiften uh, Fest ambassadors. They're from Norwood, Young America. We have Stevie, or Hannah, Stevie, Lydia, Willow, and Riley. Thank you for coming to the St. Paul Winter Carnival. Stay warm, ladies. Well, here comes a big group, a great group, the uh, Shr Osmond Shriners. The Osmond Shriners is a temple character of Shriners International, a fraternity based on fun, fellowship, and the Masonic principles on brotherly love, relief, and truth with nearly 200 temples around the globe. Well, listen, look who joined us. <laughs> look who's here. Hi, Kate. How are you? Very good. I'm doing well. How are you, Kate? Fabulous. Your voice sounds beautiful still. Well, thank you. We've had such a great week. It's been so much fun. Good. Glad to hear. So have you done any singing? A little bit here just and there. Just a little bit? Yeah, just a touch. We were talking about you folks earlier, you know, that uh, how hard it is to pick you out in a crowd. Yeah, know? it can be really tough. We blend right in. The, uh, well, you it's know. a lot of fun. So, you know, we were telling people that this isn't the only uh, thing you do this week. What else do you guys do for the rest of the year? Oh, well, for the rest of the year, we're going to go to different festivals and uh, represent the Cates. I go with the Winter Carnival, you know, with the Royal Family at times, go with the Vulcans. We do parades, we go to nursing homes, we go to school visits, we visit different sponsors. It's a pretty full schedule. We also go to Canada and we're going to Florida to represent the Winter Carnival in their festivals as well. So how do you get to be a Kate? There's a contest. It's a tough one, too. It is a, a tough how many, one. How many competitors were there? There were five this year. Five, but there's been more at times. There's been more. There's, the most that we can go is ten. The, uh, I, it's, uh, it's fun to watch. The competition is fierce. Even in the concert you have, the competition seems fierce. It can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, everybody wants to sing. Well, the Kate's a big part of, uh, of every group. And, you know, when we were in Aquatennial, Kate was a big part for us, too. Kate went a lot of places with us. We had a lot of fun with her. And uh, it's a great tradition of Winter Carnival. Oh, absolutely. Everybody, everybody loved Kate. Do you know how long there have been Kate's? Official Kate was in 1971. I am the 50th Kate. Wow, 71. So that's great. Well, it's a lot of fun. So, where, 
now that the, is the week over for you now? Technically, yes. So yes. tomorrow you get to sleep? I get to sleep, yes. Oh, that would be good, yeah. You've Another great sleep. community connection. The, uh, the Klondike Kate Casino and Pageant was started by the St. Paul JCs back in 1971. Oh, all right. That's so that, so that's, that's how we got that whole thing going. So a, a great community. Uh, another aspect of the community where people working together. So we've got the Osmond Shrine with us right now. They're founded in 1886 also. The, uh, the Shriners uh, is a, uh, a temple chapter of Shriners International, the fraternity base for fun fellowship and Masonic uh, principles of brotherly love, relief, truth, with nearly 200 temples around the globe. Uh, locally, what they do that's very important is they supported Shriners uh, health care for children. Now, Sh Shriners is, uh, they're actually selling that. They're uh, moving into other areas of uh, taking care of people, but they're still a big part of the community. And they're going to build a new facility out in Woodbury, and our current king, Darren, has been very involved over 30 years with the uh, Shriners. Oh, is that right? Well, yes. that's good to know. They have 22 hospitals, so and their specialty is burns and, uh, and spinal cord injuries. Now, sometimes they bring a lot with them. You know, we've had, during the day, you'll sometimes see them with their cycle cores, their uh, mighty mites, but uh, they don't do that in the night parade for safety reasons. Here in the front of us, we have June Lynn Lacey, Miss Senior Minnesota America. How wonderful is that? June Lynn was a talk show host, model, comedian, public speaker, and an actress, appearing in 22 films and television as Miss Senior Minnesota. Now, one that went by that we almost missed there was the Twin Cities Auto Show. It's the 47th annual Twin Cities Auto Show this year, presented by Speedway. That's going to be March 7th through the 15th at the Minneapolis Convention Center. This is the uh, largest communer, com, com, uh, uh, consumer show in the greater Midwest, and it's produced by the Greater Metropolitan Automobile Dealers Association of Minnesota. Coming up here with those amazing dance moves, look at them keeping warm, is the Cottage Grove Strawberry Festival. So the strawberry, excuse me, the Strawberry Fest Royal Ambassador Program exists to provide opportunities for involvement with local and surrounding communities to support and grow the development of young women. So on that flight, we on that float we have Chris, Christina, Little Miss Princess, Gazelle, Miss Queen, Marin, Little Miss Queen, Sophia, Junior Miss Queen, Sydney, Miss Princess, and Juliana, Junior Miss Princess. Look at them. And here comes Minnesota Krampus. These guys are always fun. They're a traditional St. Nicholas and Krampus group nicknamed Pig, uh, Pig's Eye Pass from the great city of St. Paul. The holy St. Nicholas is joined by his faithful Alpine farmer assistant in search of good boys and girls, and Krampus are in search of the naughty girls and boys. So we've seen a lot of him. We, we really actually have. He was, we saw him just a week ago. And around Christmas, we see him around our grandchildren. I have a six-year-old who's met him. All right, here coming up is the Osceola Royal Team. This honor tradition happens every June as young girls and women from Osceola County compete in one of three age divisions. So on this float, we have 2019 Miss Silver Spurs Court. Little Miss Silver Spurs, Madison Gunther. Junior Miss Silver Spurs, Savannah Reese. And Miss Silver Spurs, Mackenzie Connor. That's an interesting float. Those are, uh, what are, are those eagles? Those do, those look like. Those look like bald eagles on there. Madison's not a relation, is she? She is not. No, that is, I'm without the N. Ah. And the H. Oh, no, I have the N. I, I was going to say, I, I don't think you are without an N, but. <laughs> so Osceola is one of those 40 communities we talked about earlier Absolutely. that we go and visit during, uh, mostly during the summer. In fact, uh, I think the first one starts right around uh, St. Patrick's Day, doesn't it? I think, um, yeah, absolutely, yep. They start that, out St. Patrick's Day is really when parade season starts getting kicked off here in Siren, Minnesota. Siren, Wisconsin. <laughs> the week before, uh, the week before St. Patrick's Day here in Parade in St. Paul, we go up to uh, Siren, Wisconsin. Oh, do you? And, yeah, it's uh, a I great. Didn't, I didn't do that. I can't remember. We went somewhere I'm, for. Uh, we went west, and I can't remember where it is. Yeah, I don't either. Here we have the Sleigh Bell Dancers. The Sleigh Bell Dancers are a volunteer dance line that performs throughout the Twin Cities metro area during the holiday season to spread holiday cheer and make spirits bright. They hold open auditions every year for their fun and friendly team if you're interested in joining. <laughs> so 
So they've been in quite a few parades with us, so it's always fun to see them back again. Looks like they're gonna give us a little performance here. Let's hear for the sleigh bell dancers. That's a cappello dancing. Oh, I like it. <laughs> they're right on beat. Coming up behind them, we have the Western Saddle Clubs Association. Their mission is to provide a safe and enjoyable experience to all participants in equestrian activities, promote good horsemanship and sportsmanship, skills and practices to rich members and experience. So we have the queen, Alyssa, and we have Princess Christina, we have Ms. Horsemanship, Eliza, we have Ms. Games McKenzie, and Miss Congeniality, Cheyenne. Welcome to St. Paul and the Torchlight Parade. Following them is another incredible royalty group from another St. Paul suburb. Invergrove Heights Royalty Scholarship Program is behind them with the 2019 Royal Family. Those ladies look warm in their red capes, sporting some Vulcan red I see as well. On the float we have Miss Invergrove Heights, Tessa Quam, Junior Miss Invergrove Heights, Alyssa Gardner. Junior Miss Invergrove Heights, Natalia Wilm. Little Miss Invergrove, Abby Mars, and Little Miss Invergrove, Jada Wilhelm. Hello, ladies. Happy Carnival. Another great community festival that we get to participate in. Again, we get to see them as they travel to other festivals that we in. You know, I always joke, if it's a fruit or a vegetable, we've been to that city, yeah. whether it's strawberry days or uh, cucumber <laughs> days or whatever. So we're celebrating now in this balloon basket, Gary Corum. Gary is the uh, former St. Paul Parks and Rec Operations Manager. He just retired at the end of uh, 2019, capping more than 38 years of continuous service to the city of St. Paul. Gary, congratulations and thanks for joining us in the parade. Again, you can feel that heat coming off the balloon. I can feel it all the way up here, everybody. You know, the Park and Rec Department did such a great job renovating Rice Park here and getting it all set back up here so we could have, we reopened it at the end of November. We had a great opening ceremony here and just walking around the park, you can see what a great job they've done. You know, we take our parks for granted. You know, it's very unique in uh, Minnesota and the Twin Cities in particular, the number of parks and the programs we have. The foresight that went into it is amazing because not very many communities would have protected the lakes for the general public so that you can drive around, you can see the lakes, you can get to the beaches. Can you imagine the temptation to build oh, big houses yeah. on those lakes back in the uh, early 1900s, late 1800s when most of that was developed? So we had some great park board planners and, uh, and like Gary, we still have some, although we just lost Gary. <laughs> I hope he enjoys his retirement. Great the, legacy, great legacy. Well, folks, just to remind you that uh, there's, there's a lot more coming tonight. Uh, Vulcan, unless he ran for it, is going to be uh, coming. You know, it's possible we've seen the uh, royalty through now, and we have not seen any sign of 2020 Vulcan. It seems to be uh, falling behind here. So maybe, maybe this is, uh, this this is, is Boreas' this this year. year. He Winter wins by forever. default. It could be, you know. Forfeit, is there any sweeter word in the English language? <laughs> <laughs> a bloodless uh, over yeah, a bloodless, a bloodless coup. The, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be a surprise. I'm a little worried about what the outcome might be, though. I, I would miss summer greatly. Those beautiful lakes you just talked about wouldn't be hopping. This that summer is that, true. That case. So remember, after this, we're going to have uh, the uh, fire. Well, we're first, we're going to have the attempted overthrow of the king. Correct. And then uh, after that, we'll have uh, fireworks right here in the park. Uh, much of the park, I believe, opens again after the parade. And then... The, the uh, Vulcan victory uh, dance will be happening just down the uh, street at the Intercontinental Hotel. That's a, a lot of fun. A lot of, uh, do you, do, are there a lot of bands or one band? Um, How's the that? band Pop Rocks is performing tonight. Oh, they one are of my favorites. Oh, they're an incredible cover band that does great hits from all over, all ages. Um, so $25 out the door at the Intercontinental tonight. Come celebrate the possible victory of the Vulcans. It is. It's, uh, I, I don't see them. You know, usually by this time we uh, we, we see some more uh, torch yeah, activity. Usually there's some action on yeah. the other side of the park. 
The, uh, you know, just looking at the race park here, I, I can't help but notice we've got the red lights on all of the ice sculptures, and you got the beautiful blue tree. So you got the red and blue happening right in front of us, and then we will have that with the the guards and the Vulcans in just uh, just a little bit. That's right. Color coordination. So here we have the. Uh, looks like is this the St. Paul bouncing team? Hail the bounce. Oh yeah, oh, there yeah. We it's go. the bounce oh, team. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They are a favorite in every parade, folks. And the bounce team is always looking for people as well to try out to be a bouncer. Ani? Uh, I've uh, been bounced, <laughs> but uh, is that right? I'm not gonna, yeah, I have been bounced. Not, yes. not on the uh, rug, however. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Believe it or not, the members of the team use a blanket to propel the St. Paul bouncing girl upwards of 25 to 35 feet in the air where she performs flips tricks and acrobatics. Hail the bounce. Hail the bouncing team. Welcome, welcome. Always fun to see you. Greetings, President Mike. Great job. If you get the opportunity to be bounced, definitely take it up. It's a ton of fun. You've been bounced? Absolutely, I've been bounced multiple times. I have not done it yet. I've been bounced, but not by them. You'd be surprised how high you go. <laughs> I've been politely asked to leave. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So we got two crews. Whoa. We got two crews this year, of course. We got uh, two two bouncing uh, teams going here. So we've got a just a great spectacle here to watch them go flying up in the air. Whoa! You can do that, right, Dad? Oh yeah, the or is you got that? You yeah. can do that. At the end of the Grand Aid Parade, they uh, they bounced me, and when I got on, they said, uh, "Boreas, it must be a tough year because you weigh a little bit more than you did at the beginning <laughs> of the year." Well, Boreas has joined us behind us. You know, Boreas, we were, uh, we haven't seen any sign of Vulcan. We think they might forfeit. Looks like, looking good so far, Boreas. Oh, you're an intimidating bunch. <laughs> Here coming up, we have the Albertville Royalty Program. Their mission is to provide an enjoyable and rewarding experience for young women, children, and families that involved. The royalty travel around the state as well in the community and have the opportunity for great personal and professional growth while gaining a sense of pride with their local community. Thank you for being with us here today in St. Paul, Albert Bell. You know, I'm pretty impressed that we've got the royal family behind us. Just they're ready. They're ready to go. <laughs> ready to stand up and fight. They have their game faces on. Or, or perhaps just ready to go. <laughs> Welcome, Albertville. Behind Albertville is the St. Louis Park Partacular Ambassador Program, representing the St. Louis Park community and beyond with their Partacular Festival through action and community service, participation in parades, and supporting other communities at their festivals. Welcome, St. Louis Park. So now we have the uh, National American Miss, a uh, pageant that's unlike any other. It's designed to grow confidence and teach real-world skills to instill a valuable lifelong skills in each contestant that will set them up for a life of success. So this is the Miss Minnesota and Miss Wisconsin organizations. We also have the uh, Sterling Silver, Silver Pass uh, Foundation is in this group as well. I love the music that comes through in all these floats. It keeps the crowd engaged and entertaining. Hope the fire is keeping you ladies warm. Boys and girls of every age, would you like to see something strange? Yeah. 
Well, that's, that's impressive. That's, Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. A little more fire. Never. Uh, never enough never, fire. At the never Vulcan enough fire. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Oh boy. You know, for a minute there, we thought maybe Vulcan was not going to show. Whoa. That's impossible. And here we have another carriage, horse-drawn carriage here of some great royalty. We have the Wright County Fair, the Wright County Area Royalty. Hello, ladies! Woo! They are very good wavers. Yes, Look at they that. Are. Very good at wavers. a big very group. Good. Very good. <laughs> I'm still laughing at the Halloween song. <laughs> I'm loving that. It kind of puts you in the mood. It sure does. It's a little spooky. You know, those Vulcans, they're strange folks. That is true. That is true. <laughs> I love them, though. We love, we love our Vulcans. Well, it's good, it's good to see it. Looking down in front here, it looks like Boreas is scoping out his competition that's uh -huh. coming around the corner. How do they Ooh, look, Boreas? Building. Looking good? So we have Boreas and the Queen up here. They're they're looking confident. Looking confident. I, this could be the year. Are they're, they're due. Up they're in due. The back? So they've only lost a hundred and two times. <laughs> the, uh, so I I I'm I'm optimistic. You know, this is could that be all it. it is? This could be it. Okay. We got this. Well, then they're due. Yeah. Here comes there more. There we go. All right. Look at this crew. So, folks, you're going to see a lot of the uh, vaulted crews from past years. Here they are. A lively bunch here, yep. bringing up the rear, and they love it there. <laughs> Woo! As they like to say, they're bringing the heat. Yeah. Yep. So this year we have represented the Vulcan crews from 2001, 2007, 2009, the 2011 True Grit crew. Spill the, the beans. <laughs> <laughs> the St. Paul uh, Four Horsemen, the two 2012 group. Pumper 54, I believe that's the small one right here. Yep. The 2020 crew, of course, is here. And they have some, uh, they have some evil in mind tonight, mm. I think. Loving all the torches, too, on top of the big fire coming out of the balloon baskets. They know how to put on a show, ladies and gentlemen, and the crowd's eating it up tonight. So in one of these balloon baskets, too, we had the uh, Pioneer Press Medallion, hey. which, you know, we talked a little bit about tonight, was found in uh, Highland Park. The, uh, they found that on uh, Thursday, uh, January 28th. So it was a, it was a very uh, tough hunt that apparently was, that this was year, a, yeah. Right, and it was, wasn't it inside a doll or yeah, something? Yeah, it was in or? a doll's head That's, down at the. That I grew up in Highland else. Park. I'm familiar where that <laughs> wow. was. It was. Yeah, it was in by the, the frisbee court. Oh, yeah, of course. I, but I, and I think it was like hole or lane or whatever number thirteen. It was a little lucky uh, number thirteen. A icky, that yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, they always kind of go there. <laughs> you gotta look, you gotta look yeah. everywhere for the medallion. Nothing's yeah. off limits. <laughs> Boy, the Vulcans are really bringing, uh, bringing the infantry yeah. and bringing uh, quite a, lot, an quite a big tonight. group here. Yeah, no, if I was the royal family, I'd be a little shaken in the boots here. Yeah, yeah. How are you Be's, doing? I've been on the side of the battle. Well, I don't know. What are the, the how, many, how many guards do you have yeah. this year? There's, there's only so much seven? that crown can do. Oh, so yeah. they have se there's seven <laughs> guards. Provide they the should be fine. <laughs> if there's any guard out there, I think they could use a little extra help. Uh, Judging by the opposition here. Hell wow. Up. Truck after truck after truck coming around the corner tonight. We have plenty of Vulcans <laughs> on hand tonight. Royal wow. family, watch out. Now, Matt and Leah, you were not, Leah, oh. you were not here earlier. We pulled the crowd. Yeah. I, I have to warn you, we have a Vulcan heavy crowd. <laughs> a Vulcan, Vulcan heavy crowd, Vulcan all right. Vulcan heavy crowd. They're going with that 102 and zero record, I they, think. Uh, and so they, that's... Not only that, the, uh, the you know the serious business here is this is all about bringing summer back, and uh, we have a lot of summer fans. Well, they have had 12 days or so, so yeah, you know it was yeah, quite the yeah. run. King Boris had you know, <laughs> 10 days of okay, that's carnival at Old St. Paul. <laughs> Well, folks, watch closely here as we get into this. And remember, uh, King Boreas really hasn't been uh, defeated. At the, at the advice of the queen, they usually withdraw. Correct. Good counsel of a very smart queen. Yes. And I think withdrawing from any kind of battle sounds like yeah. a good idea to me. So. You see they're advertising the 
Oh, yeah. dance tonight with the this band is, Pop Rocks. Yeah. I think this is, this is kind of the big show of intimidation. This is where it's all flames and sirens and screaming and waving and... Now this is Matt and Leah's first year doing this, so I told them it was quite organized. Yeah. <laughs> this is, there's nothing wrong with it. This is like a Saturday at Target. I feel right at home. <laughs> Especially when there's a sale. Oh. I hope all those flames are keeping everybody warm. Although we hardly need it on a day well, like today. This is a perfect. beautiful night. It it's is a fabulous. beautiful night for yeah, a battle. Just fabulous. You know, and it's isn't just... it great to see how many people came out to the parade yeah. this year? It's a great crowd this it's year. Really yeah, it's good to see. And Mark's here filling up. they are rounding the corner. It is the 2020 St. Paul Winter Carnival Vulcan Crew. Wow. The here Vulcan, they are. You're, we know how to make an entrance, I'll tell you. You're going to get to meet them too tonight, so Hello. hang in there, folks. There they are. Driving Laverne is our very own 2019 Volcanus Rex, Dan Leach. <laughs> you know, it's just great to see all these different years of the Vulcan crew, Fire and Brimstone, come out. They've got a great alumni organization. It keeps their, uh, and you sit, they're ready. Oh, they're, oh, here we they're go. all stacking oh, up here, getting yeah. ready for the big raid. So, so this is so just what great. So what do you suppose is going on here? The Saint, the, uh, Southwind's back. Why would the Southwind be back? The Southwind always comes through twice. So they uh, go through at the beginning. I don't and know. Then they you come know back that, around again. They, they don't have a great reputation for their loyalty to Boreas. <laughs> no, I'm counting on they another defection. They go through defection. once for Boreas oh. and then once for the vaults. You know, I'm starting that. to feel a little surrounded here. I, they're filling <laughs> in on the right. I don't know. And Matt, you got a blue jacket on. Remember that. So, uh, oh, oh, yes. There's a yes, tiny little know. bit of red here, though, around the logo here. If you we look should have planned better. Right near the big five. Well, it looks to me, it looks to me like there's, there's some organization <laughs> happening news. here, folks. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not a good sign no, for Boreas. Is... The Vulcan has uh, has gotten their act together now, and. Uh, what are they doing? Can you see over there what's happening? Uh -oh. There's like, a, like they're well, they're assembling here in, in formation. They're not thinking of coming up the steps, are they? I Those are not. a lot of flaming torches over here. Quite the show of intimidation, though, from the Vulcan crew here tonight. You I'll know, once you. a Vulcan, always a Vulcan. You know, the, for the prime minister is really putting himself uh, out there in front. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Johnston. I think he's the, kind of uh, a provoker of the crowd. So he he brought his he own megaphone. Step in if <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's proud of that thing. Prime Minister, aren't we going to hear a uh, Hail Boreas? Hail Boreas! Hail Boreas! Oh! Oh, oh, they're, oh, they're, they're, they're trying to charge. The they're trying to make it up. Uh oh. Nope. Ah, uh, they've been blasted back. Uh, first victory. Blasted I, you know, this back may not be the year. It may Arctic not be the blast. year. I don't know. That looked pretty, pretty good to me. Well, sometimes now is somebody helping on the second uh, charge here? Where's that? Uh, where's that uh, south wind? You gotta watch him. There they go. Oh, they're not giving up. Nope. Boreas and his crew uh, uh, moving down the stairs. Uh -oh. Is someone Whoa. defecting? Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah! Here comes There's another charge. charge starting now. Here we go. Ah, they got him. There we go. Oh. Boreas is still looking pretty confident here. Uh, he's backing up a bit, though. Hey, well, I would, think, wouldn't you? I am. I am. No, <laughs> I don't know. got him. I know. Oh, no. There's no, no toes. No toes down there. Has no toe defected. Are they started the third charge? Are they charging? Cool. Oh, they're... I think uh -oh. it may, the queen may, the, the queen, queen needs to oh, step yeah, in the call. Oh, 
Well, folks, it looks like it happened one more time. Victorious vote. Well, here we have Volcanus Rex. Congratulations, Volcanus. We weren't sure you had it in you this year. Well done. Well, records would indicate we we're going to be 134 if it took us all night. Well, you did it in what, three charges? Well, the record says three charges is good. Boreas uh, kind of went away quickly, so I think we're good. What do you guys think? So you're going to introduce your uh, crew? I'm going to let my crew introduce themselves to you. We are the 2020 Vulcan crew, and we're going to start with General Flamus. I am General Flamus. I am the keeper of the flame. If the flame dies, the king dies. It's not going to happen. My real name is Brian Jones. I was born and raised in Painesville, Minnesota, and I'm very proud of it. Hail the Volk! Join me for the victory dance at the Intercontinental. Let's have some fireworks. That's for you at the end. I am the Count of Ashes! I am the Razor of Sleeping Spirits! My name is Tim Mouse Coran from Johnson High School! I am Count Embrus! I'm the youngest member of the group and the most romantic. In real life, I'm Rob Murphy from White Bear Lake. Hail the Volk! Hail the Volk! I am Grand Duke Fertilius, the master of propaganda, the prime minister of Rodney. I am the crew member with the most known children from St. Paul, Minnesota. I am. Gordon Carney. I am Baron Hatchburgess. You're not wrong. I am Commander of Lance's Legion. I am the stoker of emotions, and I am the spark plug of the friggin' Vulcan crew. I am Tim Diamond from Woodbury, Minnesota. Stay back, stay back. I am the Prince of Soot, and I am the recorder of past memories. And I will say that with these fine crew members we had this year, we have had absolutely a wonderful time in the St. Paul Winter Carnival. And I'd like to say, we are the 2020 Fire Eyed Crew, the Vulcans of 2020. Let's hear it. I am also the oldest of the crew, which means that for the fine women of this fair city, I am most certainly able to take care of everything that goes on. Thank you. Oh, I am Jeff Friend from Vatis Heights, Minnesota. Hello, St. Paul. I am the Duke of Clinker, the Fire King's aide de camp. I am the longest burning ember, and I never go out. But in real life, I'm Mike Kickbush from the east side of St. Paul. Hell of all! Hell of all! And I am Volcanus Rex, the 83rd, the true king of the St. Paul Winter Carnival, as you can see with Boreas gone. And in real life, my name is somebody. I'm Todd Miller from Oakdale, Minnesota, Duke of Clinker for 2013. All right, we're going to kick it off with some fireworks, and we want you guys to head down to the Intercontinental for the victory dance tonight with Pop Rocks Band. We'll see you down there. Band starts at 8.30. Let's have some fireworks. Let's have some fireworks.
Yes, let them, let them take it down. Take out all their equipment up here. 